Good morning everyone. I'm stood here by the back door and I have some of that exquisite patchouli incense burning in front of my little goddess figure. And it just is so gorgeous. It's beautiful. A couple of little undersized pumpkins there as well. <laughs> like a little harvest table. Now, it's been quite wet here, it's been raining, and uh, I, I'm still sort of recovering from, from my experience yesterday, although I recover, I, I don't think I'll ever recover, uh, and it'll take me a long time to recover financially too. Oh, but anyway, look, this morning when I got up, and again, this incredible energy at work, I felt as though there was, I felt as though what, what had happened had, had taken some of the light out of my life. And, um, and that, and that word was there, the word light. The word light was there, and I was thinking to myself, you know, I've got my little my little altar here, and you know, look, I've I've run out of these candles. You see, I've run out of these little whatever they're called tapers. So I only have the pillar candles. So I was thinking, it'd be light and dark, light and dark, and I need lots and lots of light in my life, and. Thank you so much, <laughs> Dwayne, once more. Because look, I'm just finishing off my coffee in here. Oh, it's delicious. But the little on post van came up the drive again. Just as I was walking round thinking, ah, oh, I must just get my coffee made now and taste this beautiful coffee that was roasted in Oregon. And I didn't even hear the little van come up the drive. And I'd opened the back door and I'd stepped out. And the next thing I hear this tap, tap, tap. And it was the postman. <laughs> wait, wait till I show you what he's, what's been sent to me. This beautiful package, look. Here we go. Parceled up in pink. Okay. The little name on the back from Kate. Well, you see, I've got a daughter called Kate, and I thought, oh, it must be Kate. But inside, look at this. I'll show you the little card in a moment. Inside, packaged up beautifully. What do you think of that? <laughs> Got all these lovely candles, look, in different colours. We've got like a beautiful purpley brown. It's like a claret colour. We've got this exquisite purple. And look what I was wearing this morning, little purple scarf. And this gorgeous kind of red pink. And this little card that spoke to me. The gift of light. As the days grow shorter with the turning of the year. From my home to yours, Kit. And it's come from England. Isn't that amazing? You know, something I remarked upon a few years ago and it suddenly dawned on me and I've said this to visitors to Beltana ever since. Mother Earth is energy and that energy is manifested by her in lots and lots of ways. But in its purest form, 
if she's allowed to be, that energy is just incredibly playful and joyful. And so the gift of light, and look how Kate has marked this out in the card, light. Just amazing. Just simply amazing. I never cease to be amazed. Not something. I never cease to be amazed. Hmm. So thank you, Kate. Thank you. Quite a lot of cloud today. In fact, the sky is quite grey, but the birds are singing. The birds are singing and it's quite fresh. There seems to be energy just swirling around. I was thinking about my mother yesterday. I got, <clears throat> I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this. Those of you whose mothers are quite old ladies now, or maybe they've passed. My mother sadly has passed, so I I can't I can't get to see her in the physical form, but I do feel her presence. And yesterday I was stood in Tesco's, and because uh, I have um, I have a I have a little phone that I use from for the hotspot, you know, on the computer, and um, I was in there to get my pay as you go. Um, uh, uh, little uh, uh, coupon, whatever it's called, you know, with pay as you go phones, um, mine is tw uh, 20 euros um, a month, and um, uh, you pay over the 20 euro and you get a little voucher, little voucher with a little number on that you tap into your phone. So, anyway, I was stood there patiently behind this much older lady. Um, I'd say she was in her late 70s, maybe early 80s. And just suddenly, just suddenly, I was overwhelmed with a deep, deep sense of loss because something in the way she was standing, in looking at her back and her shoulders, and I could see she was, you know, perhaps a little bit frail and I remembered I remembered the feeling of hugging my mother when she was really frail like that and how it felt and it felt that if I squeezed too hard I might just even break a bone in her body because she was so frail and just that feeling just swept over me it overwhelmed me and I felt tears welling up in my eyes. So I quickly turned to the right and I looked at all the chocolate bars <laughs> on the shelf. I thought, I can't stand here getting all emotional in Tesco's. And uh, what was the first chocolate bar I seen? 
Fry's chocolate cream, which was my mother's favourite, favourite chocolate. Um, I remember as a child, you know, uh, we would um, buy her a bar of Fry's chocolate cream as a birthday present. <laughs> my mother was not in any way, shape or form, a materialistic woman. Whatever money she ever had, she used, to, she used to just give it away. I don't think she ever bought anything really for herself. Except in the last couple of years of her life, she seemed to go a wee bit crazy and buy a few things that I think she was persuaded into buying. One being one of those mammoth chairs that, uh, um, uh, you know, is like electrically controlled. You can tip up and down and it can kind of tip tip you out of it into a standing position. <laughs> it was quite funny. <laughs> After she passed, my brother Phelan said, do you want to have that chocolate? I said, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I didn't actually take anything out of my mother's little home. Um, and then a few months later, my... Um, I was up seeing my brother in Oma and um, there was this <laughs> little bonsai tree <laughs> sitting on this windowsill, almost dead. It had lost virtually all its leaves and everything. And uh, I said, oh, I said, that, that looks like uh, the little bonsai tree that mum had in her kitchen. He said, yeah, he said, uh, it's just dying. He said, uh, we've tried everything with it and it won't come back to life. I said, well, if you don't mind, I'll take it and I'll try to bring it back to life. He says, oh yeah, you're welcome, you know, take it and see what you can do. So that's the little tree that I have on my kitchen window. Oh, and yes, it did come back to life. I just uh, give it some fresh soil and potted it up and, you know, and uh, fed it a wee bit and, you know, just give it a wee bit of TLC. A little bit of nurturing and there it was back to life and growing so so hopefully over the next few days I'll begin to uh, feel a wee bit more buoyant about Things, a little bit of reflective mood. I suppose that can't be helped really, you know. When you get a knock back in life, um, sometimes you just need to kind of reflect a wee bit and, you know, as you do. Lovely to see this little breeze. And Jack's disappeared down the lane there. Jack! Jack! Oh, no, there he is. <laughs> Sorry, Jack, I was accusing you of misdemeanours and you weren't guilty. You were innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I must pick some of these rose hips today and bring them in and put them beside the pumpkins. Do you know, even if you don't have a little altar, a nature table is fantastic. You know, it's very seasonal. All these beautiful rose hips. Just looking up at my roof there. That little lamb. Um, that little, what's it called, uh, a ridge tile 
that's actually sat on there. It's not even cemented down. You know, it's been sat on there now for the past 13 years since I had that roof kind of roughly repaired. It's just been sat there. That's why I say I feel very protected. where I've put the ladder now for the time being until I find a home for it. planted over a thousand trees here at Belsner Cottage and one of these days I'm actually going to go round and count every tree because I stopped counting at a thousand and it appears to me that there's an awful lot more than a thousand trees here because this is just a very small area of the three acres. Well, I've got quite a lot of things to do now today, so I best crack on and get them done. And hopefully um, either tomorrow or Saturday or Sunday I'll do a nice long video, I'll go for a long walk around around all the gardens here and um, talk a little bit about what I should be doing now in the autumn well in the middle to late autumn now because we're we're in the second trimester of Lunasa So, blessings to you all, and um, I'm thinking and being mindful of and praying for all those people who are in the path of these hurricanes, because I believe that Irma is rampaging through that part of um, the Caribbean and up towards Florida and there's a second and I think a third storm coming in as well. I hope everyone is safe. from what I've seen so far the crisis seems to have brought out the very best in people that's what I love most about my mother whenever there was a crisis be it a physical one or an emotional one or a financial one she rose up like a goddess and tackled it head on 
and always with optimism. Blessings to you all.